My name is Dr. Antoine Hardy. I'm an assistant professor of communication at the Borough of Manhattan Community College in New York City. Most of my work focuses on uh, hip hop in terms of being part of a cultural movement, particularly from an African-American rhetorical standpoint. My name is Kyle Adams. I'm an associate professor of music theory and the chair of the music theory department at the Jacob School of Music at Indiana University in Bloomington, United States. Um, I've published about half a dozen analyses of hip hop tracks. My name is Martin Connor. I'm a professor of music with an MFA in Brandeis University, where I wrote my thesis on the notation of rap music. A rhyming klepto who couldn't go up in the store no more. His life is like a folklore legend. Why you're so stiff, you need to smoke more brethren. Instead of trying to riff with a broke war veteran. Split made him swore he saw a heaven, he was seven. Just the breath control, the internal rhymes, but also all of this is given the backstory of how Doom is created on the song Curls. So him tapping into how hip hop is a folk culture and his life is like a folklore legend. It's all wrapped up in this little small couplet and it really just represents how brilliant he is, but also how much he could fit into a rhyme. And also when he talks about um, still getting points as an MC, like showing off his skill while still telling his story. It was the shit when I first scooped it. At least I get to sit out in New York and curse, stupid. Plead the fifth, sip wine stiffly. Patiently come up and be spiffy in a jiffy. Gift for the grind, criminal mind shifty. Swift with the nine through a 5950. That meaning is so abstracted and dense that for all intents and purposes, it's really null. And there is no meaning to it. You've seen this through the history of rap up until Doom, is that you have rappers orbiting around this idea of weakening narrative um, in order to emphasize rhyme. But Doom pushes it to a whole new level here, where really you just get these kind of incredible permutations of consonant and vowel alignment. And, and he's sort of just throwing everything together and what comes out is like kind of like an expressive painting almost. If I had to pick one Doom song that is the best MF Doom song ever, it's Great Day. This is also off the Mad Villainy album with Mad Lib. There's no loop in the beat to this song. It's uh, a Stevie Wonder instrumental that they just play from beginning to end. <laughs> Wine list. Some even say he might need some psychiatrist. Doom, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Yes, but why would the darn thing be wandering? She's like a foundling, barely worth fondling. My posse's on Broadway like Mama, I want to sing. Mad lays the bass like the race card. Villain on the case to break shards and leave a face scar. In addition to the rhymes, Doom creates this kind of web of references and allusions. Me, an old school hip hop head from the 80s, you hear my posse's on Broadway. That's an immediate callback to the Sir Mix a Lot song, Posse on Broadway. So he's got Mama, I Want to Sing, which rhymes with wandering, foundling, and fondling, but also Mama, I Want to Sing is a Broadway show. So there's a play on words here with Posse on Broadway. Mama, I want to sing. Going on, we get, but this stuff is like what you might put on movie food. Uh, what do you put on movie food? You put butter on popcorn, right? And Doom always refers to his flow as butter. So he's thinking of his flow being buttery and going on popcorn, and somebody else is thinking about putting jalapenos on nachos. Really clever moment, and it goes by quickly. I think he's he's really at the peak of his rhyme game in that song. Body couldn't do nothing once he let the brick go. And you know I know that's a bunch of snow. The beat is so butter. Peep the slow cutter as he utter the calm. Flow. Don't talk about my mom, Joe. Sometimes he rhyme quick, sometimes he rhyme slow, or vice versa. Whip up a slice of nice verse pie. You get an interruption in sort of the logical flow of the sentence at your mother. Um, and then he goes, Don't talk about my mom, Joe. And it's sort of like this back and forth between him and an onlooker, um, where he's like, As he utter the calm flow, the other voice jumps in, and then he responds to that voice. You know, and as long as you end in a rhyme, the rhythm is fine. Literally. There are like. 10 or 12 different MF Doom rhythms where you can listen to it. And all he does at the end is he's like, he just drops, you know, like right here, like vice versa. Whip up a slice, a nice verse, right? And uh, that's sort of what ties it off in the end. You know, these are rhymes, these are poems that like Joyce would be proud of, you know, Samuel Beckett. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's like enjoying language 
for the pure sake of language itself that it, it borders on the obscene say so lace the whole case load they say wear a metal mask in case his face show he told them they float spits talking and yo's his whole crew walk with pitchfork and halos Say ho if you never work the J-O and keep more cash in the stash than a pay show. Okay, yo, y'all know who to follow. This is one of my favorite couplets. Meth Doom is still connected to the MC tradition of call and response and leading the audience. So it's just a cool little snippet where he pretty much declares like he's a leader for a certain audience in hip hop and that he actually speaks for and speaks to a particular audience. So along with being a cool hip hop lyric, it's a nice little rhetorical moment where we see how MF Doom connects with the audience as being like a representative of the downtrodden in some way, right? Uh, which is always a cool thing. And I think that's one of the things that always stand out about MF Doom, uh, along with being super creative, just also being truly an MC, a master of the ceremonies, being able to be funny, being able to be witty, being able to be observational. Beautiful, it would be awfully rude you not get back to your hootie hoo.